Hi everyone, my name is Kasha Qureshi and I'm a product manager for the Fluid Framework platform. We are thrilled to share updates about Fluid with you all. In this session, we're going to recap the build conference and also announce some exciting platform updates, including the alpha release of Fluid Framework 2.0. Then we'll dig into the features of the alpha release by coding a sample app. Let's get started. Fluid Framework is an open source platform that allows developers to build real-time multi-user collaborative experiences at industry-leading speed and scale. Fluid powers various collaborative experiences in apps like Microsoft Whiteboard and Power Apps. We've also recently announced a public preview of Microsoft Loop, which is designed for teams to think, plan, and create together. All these performance-sensitive and high-scale applications are powered by Fluid Framework. One of our key partners, Hexagon, has also built their Nexus platform on Fluid Framework to bring real-time collaboration to manufacturing. Their platform connects people, technologies, and data in a seamless workflow using Fluid's capabilities. At the Build conference this year, we announced the general availability of the Microsoft Teams LiveShare SDK. It allows third-party developers to build real-time collaborative apps on the Microsoft Teams platform and is also powered by Fluid Framework. This SDK includes libraries that allow for inking and cursor sharing, video and audio synchronization, and others, all secured by M365. Let's look at one of our partners that have built an app for the Teams platform with the LiveShare SDK. Autodesk's mission is to change how the world is designed, and they are using Teams LiveShare to empower architects with real-time collaboration capabilities beyond simple screen sharing. Through custom presence, the architects and their customers can see where everyone's attention is while remaining immersed in their own 3D viewing experience. We also announced the Syntax Repository Services in Private Preview. It is the fastest way for developers to build and manage document-centric apps that leverage the rich content capabilities of M365. Syntax Repository Services can also be used as a Fluid application storage and service layer, making it easy for you to include critical M365 file and document capabilities in your apps. This includes versioning, sharing, search, security, compliance, and much more. Finally, today I'm excited to announce the alpha release of Fluid Framework 2.0. This includes an exciting new distributed data structure called ShareTree, which allows you to easily represent complex data. We have been working with various teams in Microsoft, as well as our open source partners like Autodesk and Hexagon to define the capabilities of this next generation DDS. We're also announcing a new developer tool, which we hope will help speed up your developer workflows and give you more information about your Fluid applications while debugging. We'll be covering these in depth in the coding part of this session. We also have some updates on Azure Fluid Relay. To catch you up, Azure Fluid Relay is an Azure hosted service which allows you to harness the capabilities of Fluid Framework without hosting your own service. This allows you to not only get started building your own collaborative apps quickly, but to also easily scale up as your app usage grows over time. The service GA last year, and since then we've been making it even better. We have achieved industry certifications including ISO and SOC, and we're working on adding US Gov Cloud certifications. AFR is now available in 22 regions across multiple geos. We're working on expanding presence in more regions, including sovereign cloud support. AFR is currently supporting high-skill applications and is ready for production use cases. Since its GA, the service has scaled up to handle millions of collaborative sessions a day. To get started with Fluid Framework, visit aka.ms slash fluid. Now let's get to coding. Hi, I'm Nick Simons. I've been a product manager on the Fluid Framework team for the last several years. And today, I'm excited to share the new Fluid Tree data structure. About three years ago, I built a demo that was intended to show how easy it is to build applications using the Fluid Framework. That demo looked like this. It's an application where you can write ideas down on virtual post-it notes and everyone has the same view of these post-it notes. I have a new demo I want to share that uses entirely new technology and it looks like this. So it is in fact the exact same scenario, but under the covers, 
These are completely different applications. Both apps are built using React, but the older app is built using a shared map. This has been the recommended data structure for virtually all fluid framework scenarios. It's a list of key value pairs where when one client updates a value or adds a new pair, the shared map updates in all the other clients. It's easy to understand, it's simple, and it's easy to use. However, it has limitations. While it's possible to build complex tree-like structures using maps by embedding map within map, this can get complicated and unwieldy. Further, if you need to move data within your model, you have to remove it and then recreate it in the new location. In the event of a conflicting change, your data may end up in an unanticipated state. The new tree data structure, shared tree, is designed to make working with tree-like data much easier. ShareTree supports schema and type data. It also supports array-like sequences. And ShareTree supports move operations that prevent issues when moving data within the tree. There are a number of other benefits of using ShareTree, but in this demo, we'll focus on schema, typed data, sequences, and moves. So before I walk you through the code, I just want to familiarize you with what this application actually does. So what you see here on the screen is two browser windows pointing at a static web application that I deployed earlier. The static web application is pointing to an instance of the Azure Fluid Relay, um, and it's using that for the Fluid service and also for storing data so that it persists across sessions. The application itself allows you to create these sticky notes and it allows you to move them around, type on them and group them. So I'll just quickly show some of that. So here we already have some sticky notes in play, but I'll create a new one and you can see it appears in both browsers instantly. And I'll say this is my new idea. And you can see it's syncing across. And if the other user sees my idea and really likes it, they can vote on it. And you can see that also is syncing um, maybe I'll vote on an idea over here. And ultimately, if I decide that this group should have some more ideas in it, I can move this one and move it down. And now you can see they move around. So it's not a particularly complicated application, but it's also not particularly difficult to write. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually show you the code behind this experience. So the code that's on the screen right now I will describe as aspirational. So this is the schema as we hope it ultimately will be. There is another schema file that is the actual schema that is used to build this application. It's more verbose. I will show that one as well, but I'll use this idealized version to actually walk you through what's happening. So the pattern we use to build schema is a builder pattern. So you create a builder object and then you populate that object with the types and the structure that you want your tree to have. And then we just pass that into the tree. And so this is the builder being created. And then what you can see is for each type, we're effectively adding it to the builder. Um, so we are creating a user object. It has a name field and an ID field, which has just string type, not particularly complicated. But then we also have a note object and this has a user type for its author field, which is the one we just defined up here. And it also has a user's list, which is the array-like sequence that I talked about earlier. And this is a sequence of those user objects. We also have some other types for organizing the notes, but you get the idea. And at the bottom of the file here, we're exporting all of our types actually as TypeScript types. And so what that effectively allows you to do is you can now use these types in your code to ensure that everything you write is type safe. And you'll get a chance to see that right now. So 
Well, first I'm going to show you the um, not idealized schema. So here's the schema in its more verbose form. The structure is the same. Here's the user object. Here's the note object. And here is the um, export of all the types. Um, but but you know it's more verbose and we're and we're working to keep making this simpler and easier to use so one of the ways that i have made this easier to write the react app is i've created a set of helper functions to do some of the sort of slightly more complicated operations so i've created a function here for adding a new note and that function just takes the group which is called a pile in the code and it takes the actual content of the note, and it takes the author data, constructs the object, and then just inserts it into the tree. It's, it's really that simple. And then this will be updated across all of the clients and immediately shows up on both browsers. The other function I wanna show is the move note before function. And what this allows you to do is to move notes around. And so essentially, um, this just takes two notes. One of those notes is the one you wanna move, and one essentially is the target that you're gonna move it before. And this code just does that using the move nodes function that is built right into shared tree. It's incredibly easy to use. And this is about as complicated as the code gets. The last thing I'm gonna show really quickly is the actual React UX. And so the, the coolest thing here is the use tree React hook. So we have a custom hook called use tree and you pass your shared tree into this custom hook and it passes you back the root of the tree. And now you can use all of the data off of that root. You can, you can change it and you can put it in your UX and now React will update anytime data in the tree changes. It's incredibly handy and it means that you really don't have to think about the, the fluid updates or event handling or anything. It's all handled by this custom hook. And so basically we pass the, we get back the root and then we just start passing it in as, as props. And you can see we're doing that here. But one of the ones that I, one of the, one of the React components that I wanna show is the notes component and the note component. And I wanna show the notes component because this allows you to see that this is the is, a, is just the note that sits on the pile. So it's a sequence of notes and you can iterate across that the same way you would iterate across any array. And here is the actual note and it's just very, very simple. And you're able to use the properties um, that you get out of the tree to just populate it. So here we're just passing the note into the toolbar and the text area. And in the text area, we're literally taking the text from the note, which is just the same thing we saw in the schema. And if somebody changes it, anytime the text changes, we just assign it. So it actually updates character by character and shows up in both, in both um, browsers instantly. But as you can see, there really isn't anything in the React app that isn't just a completely normal React app. And the only part that you really need that is special is the use tree custom hook. So thanks for letting me share this with you. And if you're interested in using this yourself or getting your hands on any of this code, Cash will have details on how you can do that later in the video. So again, thank you very much. Now let's look at the Fluid Developer tools with our Brainstorm sample app. This tool is available through the Edge and Chrome extension stores. In order to use the Fluid Developer Tools, you need to add a dependency to your app and initialize the Developer Tools library first. You can find instructions on how to do it in the Fluid Developer Tools documentation at aka.ms slash fluid slash dev tool. Once you've initialized the Developer Tools library in your app code and installed the Fluid Developer Tools from your browser's extension store, you can start looking at your application's underlying state. In order to launch the Developer Tools, Right click on your app's web page and select Inspect. You'll see a new tab added to your browser dev tools for Fluid Framework Dev Tools. Click on it and you'll be able to see all the Fluid related information in your application. In the left navigation, you can see all the containers in your app. Selecting a container will show you the details about it in the right panel.
At the top, you can see basic information about your container, including its current state, your client and user IDs. We also allow you to modify the container state by disconnecting and reconnecting it. This allows you to test various scenarios in your application. At the bottom, you can see three tabs that show more information about the data, audience, and states of your container. The data tab allows you to look at the container data in a hierarchical structure, including data types and values. In this case, we can see the share tree that we're using to represent our groups and notes. Now this data is updated in real time. So as remote and local users are making changes to your application, you can see them reflected immediately. This can help you uncover UI and data issues in your app. The audience tab allows you to view the users that are currently in your container, their client ID and permission scopes. You can also get a historical view of users joining and leaving the container. Now, as new users join the container, you can see them reflected immediately. The states tab shows a log of container state changes, including connect, disconnect, and attach. And finally, selecting events in the left navigation shows a running log of framework events, including details. So you can use this to learn more about the changes in the container. We plan to add many more features to the dev tools and welcome your feedback through our GitHub page at aka.ms slash fluid slash dev tool. So today we look at the exciting release of Fluid Framework 2.0 Alpha with new features like the Share Tree DDS and Fluid Framework Developer Tools. We also demonstrated these new features by building a brainstorm sample app. We will continue to improve these features in public in the coming months as we work towards general availability and welcome your feedback through GitHub. Thanks for watching.